Hey there, everybody. Well, I'm sure you guys have heard the words blockchain and cryptocurrencies multiple times uh, in the past few years, maybe even a little bit more recently. Um, and maybe even you yourself have been thinking about investing or learning more about Bitcoin or Ethereum or just like what really is this technology um, even about, right? So, uh, well, I'm here today to kind of help address some of that stuff. Uh, I want to be able to give you guys an overview of blockchain and cryptocurrency from both a technological standpoint and from a business application standpoint so that you guys are uh, most prepared to really understand what this new industry is really about. And if you're ready to take the dive into either investing or joining the industry, uh, you will be more armed with some knowledge to uh, really like make a difference and understand where this technology is going and how it can make an impact for the future. So without further ado, uh, this is Blockchain 101 presented by Republic. And a little bit about myself before we start. My name is Brian. Um, I'm the co-founder of Republic Crypto, and I'm also a partner uh, at a fund called Torion Capital. Uh, I've been involved in crypto for about four years now, um, mining, researching, investing, all sorts of stuff. And in the past, I've actually done uh, a huge variety of work from small startups to consulting large enterprises. And because blockchain technology is being adopted throughout all verticals and all sorts of companies, uh, I feel like this kind of qualifies me to talk about how blockchain can be used and influenced in uh, such a diverse group of companies. In today's agenda, uh, three uh, main topics here. I wanna talk about what is blockchain? What is cryptocurrency? So you guys will understand what it is uh, from just like a high level technological standpoint. Uh, we're gonna go into some popular use cases of blockchain and crypto. And uh, finally, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into uh, blockchain and FinTech. So going into blockchain crypto 101. Uh, so what really is blockchain? You know, it sounds like it could be complicated, but it, at its core, it's not really that complicated. Blockchain really is just a database architecture. You can break down the words block and chain and understand that it's really a way to organize data into blocks. And those blocks are actually chained together with cryptography. And there you get blockchain. Uh, applications that are built on blockchain exhibit the following three characteristics, which I think are very important to understand what kind of applications can be uh, beneficial for blockchain. And uh, you know, blockchain technology really allows the, for building of, of secure, decentralized, and open source projects. Uh, not every blockchain exhibits these characteristics. Um, some of them are more secure than others. Some of them are more decentralized than others. And some of them are actually more open source than others. Uh, but be, you know, the reason why blockchain is secure is because they're very difficult and costly to hack due to the advanced cryptography that is involved in building these applications. They are decentralized because there is no central authority or company that manages the application. So there is no CEO of Bitcoin. There is no CEO of Ethereum. And that's really done um, intentionally because the networks are actually owned by the network participants or the miners or the node runners that are involved in uh, securing the Bitcoin blockchain or any other blockchain that you guys can uh, read about. Blockchain is also very open source. So what that means is all the code is public and you can really see what's going on under the hood in all these applications, which uh, is really important because you, know, you wanna know what you're getting yourselves into. And a lot of centralized companies today, they may hide some of the practices that they do, or it's just kind of a black box what they do. Uh, with a lot of blockchain and decentralized applications, everything is out there for you to see. Cryptocurrency, you, know, you guys hear that word a lot. What does it mean? Is it used interchangeably with blockchain? I think colloquially, yes. But cryptocurrencies actually mean uh, they represent tokens that are built on top of blockchain. So cryptocurrency actually uh, refers to a type of token or a type of asset that is built using blockchain technology. So people may say like, hey, I work in crypto. Hey, you want some crypto? You know, that's just shorthand for cryptocurrency. And cryptocurrencies uh, use blockchain to exist. Here's a quick diagram that I thought was very, would be very useful to kind of uh, quickly go over. 
this diagram explains how the Bitcoin blockchain works, and uh, it's very applicable to many types of blockchains. So for example, when a transaction is requested, say I'm trying to send you one Bitcoin, that transaction gets you know, added to the next block on the Bitcoin blockchain. And when that transaction is added, all the miners or all the participants of the Bitcoin blockchain are like, all right, yes, Brian's gonna send you one Bitcoin and let's all agree that that is um, gonna be you know, stamped onto the ledger. And the way they agree is called consensus. And going into the way consensus is performed is actually a topic for another uh, discussion, but Bitcoin employs what's called proof of work consensus to make sure that all of the nodes come to an agreement on what information is actually stored on the Bitcoin blockchain so that every node has the same copy. So, you know, once I send you one Bitcoin, all the nodes validate that through consensus and that information is then just published on the Bitcoin blockchain and everybody has a copy and that Bitcoin is now sent over to you. The people that verify that information actually receive a reward for doing so and that's how people are incentivized to participate in the Bitcoin blockchain and secure the network. An important thing to note is that there are many different types of blockchains out there that operate similarly to this, such as Ethereum, which is uh, another very popular blockchain. And in this example, what's being represented in the block is a transaction of Bitcoin, but anything can really be uh, represented on this, uh, in this transaction. It could be, you know, it could be a digital asset. It could be a skin in a video game. It could be a crypto kitty. So the possibilities are really endless. So yeah, talking about you know, what possibilities are out there, uh, let's go into some popular use cases. Uh, finance and payments, uh, provenance, meaning you know, tracking the history of things, and digitally native assets are some really popular applications of blockchain. And in the finance and payments category, you know, one of the most popular applications is store value. And people are kind of equating Bitcoin as a digital version of gold. And the reason for that is because people typically use gold to store wealth due to you know, gold's you know, scarce properties and its traditional uh, use case as a store of wealth. Now with Bitcoin rate rising in value and being digitally scarce, Bitcoin is also another way to store value, but in a much, easy, much easier and a much more convenient way because it's purely digital. You, know, you don't have to go physically hold onto your gold you can actually just have Bitcoin in your Bitcoin wallet. Uh, decentralized finance is another buzzword you guys have probably heard a lot. It's uh, a way to kind of mimic traditional finance structures in a decentralized way built on blockchain technology. And we're actually going to dive into DeFi in another uh, episode because this is a, a really interesting topic that really needs its own attention. Cryptocurrencies, as I mentioned before, built on blockchain, allow for the transfer of value in a completely digital manner and with no borders. So you can send crypto, you can send Bitcoin or Ether to anybody in the world as long as they have an internet connection. And the cool thing about that is that cryptocurrency can do for money what email uh, is doing for sending letters, right? True borderless sending of value. And that really opens a lot of doors for sending money and banking in a truly borderless way uh, and not just limited to people that you know, have access to banks now. And this has really great implications around the world. The, the second you know, really cool application that I wanna talk about is provenance. So I used to work in supply chain and supply chain is such a manual process. It's very difficult to verify, but using blockchain and adopting the new technology, you can actually verify the supply chain of food and drugs and products and particularly in the pharmaceutical industry where counterfeit drugs are a huge problem, blockchain can really promise to solve that by making sure that the entire supply chain of a pharmaceutical drug is verified and trusted. And that can have really great uh, implications for the quality of medical care and counterfeiting or combating counterfeiting drugs. The last, in, the last thing here I wanna talk about uh, is a little bit more on the entertainment side. Uh, digitally native assets are something that have really come through from blockchain. And what that means is you now have the ability to create digitally unique assets. So if you're a digital artist, you can now really have art 
that is digitally unique and you can only have like really 10 copies of your art and send it out and not everybody's gonna have copies because each copy is secured uh, through blockchain technology. And that's really cool because it mimics, you know, traditional art where there's only physical copies that are out there. And, but these are now represented on blockchain. This can apply for digitally unique skins or weapons in video games or digitally unique trading cards uh, that you can either, you know, collect or you can actually use in the same way as Magic the Gathering. And the third module here, uh, why is really all of this important for FinTech? Well, you know, as you know, we Republic are a FinTech company and are especially passionate about this industry. And blockchain really has a lot of uh, promise here. Blockchain allows for what's called micropayments. And, you know, companies with four platforms with lar lar lots of investors or users can really leverage uh, blockchain technology Technology to distribute micropayments um, in a robust digital way so that every user can receive you know the benefits or payouts or dividends or any returns um, in a very secure way and it doesn't matter how big or how small you know usually sending out very small rewards are cost prohibitive but with blockchain it's really not and it actually really helps further the financial inclusion aspect of investments uh, liquidity is a new, uh, it's not really a new concept, but it's really something that blockchain can help further with digitizing securities. So with digital securities, because they are completely digital, they have a faster pathway to liquidity due to the less amount of work that's involved to process them. So traditionally it's very manual and laborious through paperwork and going through many different levels, but with blockchain and smart contracts, uh, all of this can be automated. And uh, transactions can be audited, which is really important because, you know, you really want to make sure everything that you are doing, especially in the fintech space, is audited and uh, reviewed correctly by professionals. And because of the open source and secure properties of blockchain, this makes auditing transactions very, very easy. And last but not least, compliance and traceability. You know, this is also super important in fintech. You want to be able to trace the identity and ownership of digital assets and this can all be done in a programmatic way and all even done in accordance to certain standards to maintain um, KYC AML requirements and KYC AML stands for know your customer and anti-money laundering and these are very important security and compliance concepts in the fintech industry. So with that um, I hope you guys uh, come away with a little bit more of an understanding of how blockchain technology works and how it's applied to industries today. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. And if you wanna learn more, please follow us on Twitter or join us on Telegram.